In this last section, we're going to quickly cover a few advanced topics for you to explore once you've got a handle on the basics that we've described throughout the rest of the series. None of these are tools that you need to use, though I'd suggest this first topic to be very healthy to incorporate into your processes. Any JavaScript code used by Node.js is a module. In order to be useful, a module should set a value to the module.exports property. This makes some of the code in the module available for other modules to use. For example, if we look at our contacts route, you'll see the last line sets a value to module.exports. One of the hardest things about creating modules is to decide where they should go. We used a lot of modules and set them as dependencies in our package.json. If you have a module that is useful for multiple apps, you can do this. Instead of just providing a name and version, you provide a path to a Git repo, or you can publish your module to NPM if it's useful to others. If the module isn't useful to others, you can just create a JavaScript file wherever it is convenient. I sometimes make a helpers folder for code that is specific to just one project. Remember to use the correct paths when requiring a local module. If your module is installed via package.json or npm, then you just put quotes around the module name. Otherwise, you'll need to use a path. Keeping your code clean helps improve the maintainability. For example, a feature I'd like to add is the ability to tie two profiles together. If a user creates their account using Twitter login, then later logs in with Facebook, I'd like to try and detect these two and tie the profiles together. Now that I have all of the account lookup code in one place, I only have to change it once. Next, let's talk about another tool for making your code more maintainable.